Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. And today we're going to be looking at making this parametric boat using the Curse Shapes Workbench. As you can see, I can change the internals and it will be reflected inside the boat after we've made that change. I'm going to be showing you how to use a number of curved arrays. So I'm going to be using the Curve Shapes Workbench. And this is quite a simple boat, it's quite quick. And we're going to go through a number of other techniques in there. So I'm going to use sketching techniques, offsetting, and we're going to be understanding how the offset tool works, the 2D offset tool, not the 3D offset. And we're going to understand how to shell out a curved shape array as well. This technique can be used for fuselages with aircrafts. So if you're using this for a model airplane, this is quite suitable for that. And I'm going to be showing you how to create these sections here. This is one single extrude, and this is created from a face and use the curved shapes array with that face. So we're going to be using the curved shapes array in a way that some people might not have seen it used before. So I hope you enjoy this channel and let's go and have a look at this workflow. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B E Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. So for this tutorial, we're going to be using the Curve Shapes Workbench. That is available from the tools and the add-on manager. And we can install it from here. We just search for Curve Shapes and we'll install it from there. Now, before we go ahead, I'm going to go into the sketcher and just show you a couple of things that we need to be aware of. If we create a sketch in here, that's gone the XY plane. And we'll create a very simple sketch. Let's go for a circle just in the center and close that. In the part workbench, we've got the offset tools. So in part, I can select that sketch and use the 2D offset or the part 2D offset. And this will offset it by how many millimeters that we want. So if I set this for two, this creates a two millimeter offset. Now notice that this is a closed sketch. So I'm using pipe at the moment to offset it. If I use skin, then you can see it doesn't really matter. We still get that offset. We don't use the field offset, that will create a face. That's okay that. Now you see that I've got the 2D offset inside that I have a sketch, which are two different objects. So the sketch can be hidden now I can use the 2D offset. The sketch is just inside that to show the 2D offset has been created from that sketch. This is good to create an outline or a smaller piece of geometry to remove from something that's created from a larger piece of geometry. So for instance, if I took the 2D sketch and extruded that by 10 millimeters, and because that is a closed sketch, it makes a solid. I can take the sketch as well and extrude that by 10 millimeters. May go the other way, so let's take that extrusion and use the board as minus 10 millimeters, send it the other way. So you can see I've got an inner and outer part. And if I'm in the part workbench, what I can do is take that extrude. The outer extrude, which is this one, control click the inner extrude and use a cut. What I would normally do is just create a ring with the sketch and create a extrude from that. But this is important to know for our workflow that we're going to be following. Watch what happens when we have open geometry. So I'm going to delete those extrudes and the offset and just come back to the sketch. And I'm gonna create an open geometry now. So let's get rid of the circle and just have an arc. And we're gonna create an arc in here, something like that. Now, if I take that sketch 
and do a 2D offset. We have to change the mode from pipe to skin to get the offset. If I go to in here, you can see that's just offset by pushing the arc inwards or outwards, depending on what direction we go. So we did minus two, it will place it the other direction. And we've got to change it to skin. That's okay that. If I come back in and close this with a line, hit close. You can see the offset has gone inwards. Click on the offset, but we've got some problems here. We've got a crossover. So we have to come into the offset and change it in the mode back to pipe. And we get that offset going inwards. Notice that before this offset was in line with the top. So we're coming to the sketch, double click on the sketch, delete this line, hit delete and close and change that offset back to a skin and click off. That is in now in line. Before it was pushed downwards here and the line went across. So this was actually offset inwards. This is important for what we're going to do next. I'm going to delete both those sketches and offsets. And we're going to start new. So we're going to create a very quick boat. Let's come over to the sketcher. And what I'm going to do is also view and toggle axis cross so we can see the axis and the planes that we're going to sketch upon. First of all, we need a profile. So this is going to be the cross section of the boat. Take a new sketch along the X, Z plane. Let's go for that one and hit OK. Cross section is quite simple. Basically, we take a line. So this line here and I'm going to make a mistake now. So I'm going to sketch this from this point here and show you how to fix this problem. So if I sketched from this point here and come outwards like so, and then create a arc from this point upwards to say here. So create this length and the arc up for left side of the boat. Hit escape to get the mouse pointer back. Take both of these and create some tangency against them using the tangency constraint. So we get a nice tangent flow across there. And we also need a line that goes across here for the top of the boat. And what I'm going to do is take, after hitting escape or right mouse button to get the pointer back, take these two points and this axis and make it symmetrical. I'm then going to take this arc, just click it. I'm not using the control, it's a hungry selection and this line, I'm going to mirror it over this line here. So I selected these two, select this line, sketch, sketch the tools, and we use the symmetry. It's also available from the toolbar, but we just use it from the drop down because everybody has that in the drop down. That's great symmetry across there. The trouble is that, well, it's disconnected. Let's hit Control Z. So we highlight this point here. This will highlight two points. So you can see the two points have highlighted in here and use a coincident constraint. The same with this one. Highlight the two points will highlight of the arc and this line and use a coincident constraint. So this is all locked down now. So this is the cross section. If I hit close, if I try to create a sketch now, let's bring it down this way. And I wanted to create a sketch going across here to outline the top. Then when I create a sketch, we'll just make sure nothing's selected first. There we go. Create a sketch. And this will put it on one of the base planes. And we're looking along the X, Y plane. And hit OK. It's going to place this along the bottom, which we don't want. I hit close and delete that sketch. So we need to move this sketch. Let's double click on the sketch. I'm going to use the move tool in the sketch. So we highlight all of this, drag and highlight. So everything's highlighted in there. And we come up to sketch, sketch tools, and we go down and we see the move. 
Now when we've done that, because we highlighted all of them, it's going to take the last point we've selected. So you can see this line is going from the last point. We don't want that. Right click to cancel the tool. So I'm going to highlight. And I'm going to click on this point to make sure that this point is the last thing we've selected. If it goes red, just click it once again. If it goes red, just click it again. So this is the last point we've selected. Now come to think of it, if I try to move this, this point here is coincident to this point. So what I'm going to do is copy it. So come up to sketch, sketch tools, and we'll use the copy. Again, a line will be visible, showing us where this will be actually placed. If I try to move this, then this point, it will deform around this point because these lines are coincident to that point. Therefore, they will stay connected to that and deform geometry. Because I've used the copy, I'll bring this down onto this line and click. And we've moved that down there. And now I can highlight all of this. Notice the highlights only highlighted what was in that box. So if I reverse highlight, it takes everything else, everything that box has touched. So we hit delete. So now what we've got is this here. And we can do some final amendments by taking this point, this line, and using a point on object constraint, this one here. The same on this side, point on object constraint. And we'll add the constraints in because the constraints didn't come with it because there was nothing to constrain that to. So we can use some symmetry, etc. etc. I'm not going to fully constrain this down, I'm just going to leave this as is. So if I close that now, we have our sketch. It should be closed geometry. We can test that by coming to the sketch and come over to the part. And if we extrude that, and OK, we can see it extrudes nicely into a solid. If not, some kind of constraint is missing. I'll just hit delete on the extrude and we click on the sketch and press the spacebar. So we have our profile. We can now create the top view of the boat that goes this way. So from the top along the XY, I'm going to create a sketch. So let's come over to the sketcher. Make sure nothing's selected. Create a new sketch, XY plane, and now this should be placed in line with the top, which is good, exactly what we want. Let's bring in some geometry. So I'm going to bring in this arc here. You can see we've got the point. We can just bring in the point if we want. And this is where we're going to attach an arc to these. Also for tangency, I'm going to create an arc on this line here. So let's click on top. And first of all, we'll come over to the arc, use the endpoint and endpoint arc, and we'll create an arc upon this point, come out and bring this around. And then we'll create an arc from this point, across to here and bring this around. Now I want to take this point of this center arc and place it along this line. Let's hit skate to get the mouse pointer back. And that means that this arc will be centered that point on this line and we'll use a point on object constraint and make some tangency across these two here with the tangency constraint. Okay that and we want to leave this open. Let's create another arc on the other side. So on this point and this one, create the arc and we need tangency across these two using the tangency, just going to hit OK on that message and take these two points and keep them in line. So we've got that there. And we can decide on what shape we want this and something like that. Now, because we've got a nice tangency across here, when the profiles get reflected across this, what's known as a whole curve, it will go all the way up to this arc here. It'd be nice and clean. And we'll see that in a moment. Let's close that. So we've got the profile and the top arc. 
Now we want to come round to the side and create the side profiles. So from the left, we'll create another sketch. So click off, new sketch, and we're looking along the YZ plane. So the YZ plane, this will flip us around probably to the other side, which doesn't matter. And what I'm going to do is just put a bit of angle on here and use the import geometry tool, this one here. And this imports the geometry. So we import this arc, we get a point on this line, and we want this point down here as well. Doesn't matter if we get a line, we just want that point there. And I'm going to create a arc across here as well. I'm going to use two arcs. So we'll create one arc that goes to about here and this point here. Let's make sure we get the right one. This point here, coincident to that point. And to this point, you can see the coincident constraint kicking in and create another arc that goes that way. Again, hit escape and then use these two arcs to create some tangency across those. And okay, that. let's zoom out to see what we got. And let's bring this in. I drag in and we'll bring that in to say round about there. If we want to, we could let's say swap out the arc, click on it, delete, and add in a straight line rather than an arc. And let's connect up to this point. Hit escape, take these two and create some tangency. Okay, that. And then we can affect this to what we want. So I'm going to say something like this. One thing to remember is that all of these are known as whole curves and they're in line. So they're in line with the end and they're in line with the beginning. This one here. I'm going to create another whole curve now. Let's close that. And I want a line going across here. So this is going to stop profiles from disappearing out the top. I could use this sketch and create a line that goes across here. But when I offset this sketch for the inner, then this is going to offset downwards. So we're going to get an offset sketch in here, which is no good to me because I want to create an inner and outer surface to remove. I'm not using this profile and creating a walled profile in here and in a part in here because when this gets profiled across here, number of profiles created across here, they'll get thinner and thinner when it comes to this end and we won't have a consistent thickness across here. So that's close that and we need a sketch from the YZ plane again. So new sketch and we'll name these in a minute. YZ plane and OK. So this one, again, we're going to pull in some profiles, some external geometry. So this arc and we'll just create a line coincident to this one and coincident to this one here. So we've got that line there. It's fully constrained. You can fully constrain all these if you wanted to. But we've got basically got a wireframe of a boat. So we have, if I right click and rename that, this is the top midline. This one is the bottom curve. Right click, rename. This one. Right click, rename. This is the top whole curve, we'll call that. And this one is the profile or the cross section. We'll call it cross section. So we've got one cross section and three whole curves. That's come over to the curve shapes workbench. We are now in the Curse Shapes workbench. I'm going to save this. Hit Control S and save it. So we've got something to go back on. So
So to use this, what we need to first do is select the cross section, the one that we want to array across here. We're gonna build an array. Then control select a whole curve. So I'm gonna take the top, the bottom, and then the top midline. And then we're gonna use this tool here or the curve shapes and curved array. This has placed a number of profiles across here and it has deformed them in line with this shape. So we've got the curved array here. Coming to the curved array and we come down, we can see the solid is false. I set this to true. And this will show us how closely this has taken to these whole curves. You can see, well, it's not true to these curves. This means that we need to add more profiles in here. And that's as simple as clicking on the curved array and items, that's up this. So click on the items and up this to say, let's go for 10. And you can see that's deforming nicely. That's come in and do 20. And you can see, well, we're basically there. We can increase that a bit more, but I'm quite happy with that. So now what we'll do is click off. That's taken. You see all the sketches are still visible. We've come into here. We can hide these by selecting them all and pressing the space bar. So what we've got is the shape for our boat, but we need to take out the middle and add the internal structures. To do that, we're gonna use the offsets. So we're gonna create another curved array in here and use the offsets. Let's click on the curved array and press the space bar. I'm gonna bring back the midline, which we don't need to offset, that's fine. The cross section, we don't need to offset. We don't need to create a smaller one for the internal one. What we're gonna do is create a smaller curved array, this one here for the internal and remove that. I could clone it and remove it, but I'm just gonna create one with offsets just to show the process of that. It comes in handy when we want to do stuff like this. So we've got the top midline and the cross section, which we don't have to change. The next one, which we do have to change is the bottom curve, this one here. Let's click on the curved array and press the space bar. So this bottom curve, I want to go inward, inset inwards. Let's come over to the part workbench and click on the bottom curve and can come up to part and use the 2D offset. The moment this is a pipe, so let's change this to a skin. So we've got a skin there. And also we want it to go inwards. So we use a minus value and we can see how that's gone inwards there. So what we've got is a sketch here and the offset that's inside here. So let's go for minus, let's do a minus two on that. See what it looks like. That's good. Okay, that we've got the offset. Inside that offset is the bottom curve. These two are linked. So we click on the bottom curve inside of that curve away, press the space bar, it will hide it inside the offset. So let's hide that and just leave the ones that we want for our modeling, for our next operation. So we'll offset this one. Let's go to the other one now. So we want the top curve, this one that comes around here. I'm gonna do another offset with this one. So click on the top whole curve, use a 2D offset or from the part, 2D offset, change this to skin and set this to minus two. That's gone inwards now. Okay, we have the 2D offset. In here, we have the top hole curve. Press the space bar, because we just want the offset. Remember, these two are the same object. So now what we've got is the profile, the top hole curve, and the two hole curves for the top and the bottom curve. We don't have to worry about this profile. 
this cross section because it will deform to the smaller you can see these are inset it will deform to these absolutely fine so i'm going to collapse the curved array this one here and we've got the offset and this offset matter of fact we need the cross sections and the top midline to use we can select them from the screen if we want let's come back to the curved shapes workbench and i want to use the profile i want to use to array across here so i'm selecting from the screen this time so showing you another way of selecting this i want the top as you can see the offset has been selected that offset there we want this top line as a boundary to stop that from escaping you can see the top midline has been selected and also we want this one here this bottom curve you see the edges have been selected but they've been selected over here so it's absolutely fine so control selected those and i'm going to use curved array again click that and you can see well we've got a bit of a problem there we've got an escape profile this side but the profiles have been added correctly going along here so what do we need to do well let's click on the curved array and that escaped profile well that's coming to the items and up this to the same as what we had before which was about it was about 20. so we've got those there we've got the escaped profile that's sitting there which well we don't want so the good thing about this is that just having a look at this make sure we've got all the profiles in there good thing about this is that we've got control over this curved array so we click on the new curved array you look down we've got this offset end and offset start so depending if this is the end or the start we can click say offset end and if we put 10 in there we've moved that forward so let's put two you see that our profile has disappeared now and we've put 12 not two let's delete that two and we can finally adjust this so you can see the profiles are following this arc let's push it in two so we get this nice gap in here which we want and we're basically all set to go so i'm going to take that and set this to a solid so come down solid set this to true so we've got a solid in here which follows those lines and if we come up to the other curved array this one here and press the space bar we can see we've got a solid in here so you can see we've got a curved array inside and a curved array on the outside i'm going to remove this curved array from this one to leave a hollow now word of warning we may have to take the internal one so this is the internal curve away this one here rename that internal we may have to take the internal one and shift it up a bit to break through the surface let's see how we go just going to save it so let's come over to the part workbench for our boolean tools so these here take the one we want to keep which is the external curved array control click the one we want to remove the internal one and use the boolean cut this one here so this cut that removes one from the other so as you can see well it hasn't come through the top so what we do we come into the cut and we select the internal curved array which is invisible at the moment come down to the placement position and we're going to place a number on the z axis to make it come through the top so i'm going to click on the internal curved array and press the space bar so we can see it in there on the z axis let's put 0 0.5 
See how it's come through the top now. If I click off, this will recalculate. You can see there's a tick there. It's recalculated. Click on this internal curved array and press the spacebar. We now have a walled object, which is our boat. Now, the good thing about the curved array is that we're not limited to just sketches. We can add a face in there and create a number of faces inside here. And this is good for internal structures. So we go back to our tree view. Let's see what we got. Inside this internal curved array, this one here, we have the cross sections. Press the space bar on that, you can see, well, the cross sections are in there. Let's click on the cut and hide it so we can see that cross section there. And we've got this offset, we're going to press the space bar on because we don't want that. And top midline, press the space bar on that. And this one, press the space bar on that. So basically we've just got this cross sections. I'm going to take that sketch, edit, duplicate selection, and now we've got a sketch that we can work with. Take the other one and press the space bar. So we've hidden that cross section and we've got the one that we've copied. Let's double click on that. And that's made this a little bit more interesting. So let's not go overboard, let's just do this so it's quick. I'm gonna add some shapes in here to make some kind of structure. And what I'm thinking is, basically let's go for something like a line here. And I should use the polyline really, to make my life easier, this one here. And we'll come up. And I may want to arc around here, but let's just add something very simple like this. So we've created an internal structure, this here. I'm going to take that, let's highlight that. I'll start from here and highlight it. There we go. So we've highlighted all of that. I've got this point here, which I'm just going to click on to get rid of and make sure it goes red. So let's click there. I'm going to click on this line here. I'm not holding down control. This was the last line I've selected. I'm going to use Symmetry Tool, Sketch, Sketch Tools, and Symmetry to reflect that over this line here. I'm not going to bother restricting it down, constraining it down. Let's hit Close. So I've got an internal structure, something simple to use. Because I have that internal structure, at the moment it is a sketch. I'm going to convert that to a face and use that face as a number of strews to go across the boat. So we take that cross section and in the part, if we come down to the part, if we come up to the part menu and come down to make face from wires, we create a face from that wires. Now we can use this face in another curved array. And I'm going to use the internal curve array. So let's come into the cross section. We don't want that because we're going to use the face as the cross section. We're in the internal curve array here. So you can see this one here. We want this offset. We want this top midline. And we want the other offset. So these are the whole curves we're going to follow. So all the whole curves in the internal array a set for the cross section. The face will be our cross section. Let's come over to the curve shapes array. First of all, make sure nothing's selected, select the face. This is the one we're going to array. Control select each of the whole curves. So we're looking at this curve here. Let's take them from the tree view. So the offset, Hover over them, we can see them highlighting. Top midline and the offset. Doesn't matter which way or which order you select these, as long as we select the face first. Now select the curved array. 
and you can see what's happened. We've got this problem down here, which we use some offset end or offset start with. We've actually created the internal structure in here, which we're going to extrude in a moment. Let's come over to the new array, this one here. This is the internal structure. Come down and let's have a look at the offset end. And let's set that to something like, well, it's going to be free in here. That's set this to first of all the items is free and then we can do the offset end let's do about 20 in there so it pushes it forward don't get confused with this face here we're going to hide this in a minute and i'm going to use the offset start as well and set this to 20. so we've pulled that profile that's in here forwards and we can adjust these for the offset start and end so let's go for 25 and the offset start, 25, the offset end. I'm going to set this to 35. Actually, 32. Let's go for 30. Let's keep it as 30. So we've created those structures inside. We haven't set this to solid. We don't want to set this to solid. This here is the face. If I click on that, that's the face we created these from. Press the space bar to hide that. And also we've got all the other things inside. So we can click on this shape, press the space bar. We don't want any of these. Press the space bars on those, click on those. And this one, press the space bar. So now we've got, if I click on this one, the curved array. So this is the internal structure. If I come over to the part workbench, this internal structure, the curved array, can be extruded. If I click on the extrude, the extrude tool here, and set this to something like two millimeters, we use symmetrical, so it extrudes this way and this way. But if I hit OK, then this is going to fail. If I look down and look down this list, you can see the curved arrays in here. Because we can extrude faces, it's created an array of faces we can extrude faces so we should be able to extrude that right if i hit ok it's going to fail because it can't find the normal so because we've got multiple objects in here the normal is not known so the normal is the direction of extrude and the direction of extrude is the y so we click on the y doesn't matter if it's minus if click on again it's minus or plus we're going symmetrical. If it's plus, it's going to come this way. If it's minus, it's going to go this way. Look at your arrows, plus this way, minus this way. So we've set the custom direction, which is Y. And we've selected the array. All we hit is OK. And that's extruded each of those as one extrude. This is a compound object. I can come up to the part and compound and explode compound and each of these will be individual. But we don't need to do that because we can Boolean compounds to solids. So with that in mind, let's have a look at the cut which we've hidden and press the space bar. So we've got our internal structure and our boat. And if we wanted to, the final Fusion is to take the cut and control click the extrude and use the Boolean fusion there or part Boolean and union. We run that and that will just union them together. And now we've got our finished boat. So as you can see with the curve shapes workbench, we can create quite a simple boat with one single profile and the whole curves. We also can utilize the curve shapes array to create faces, an array of faces. And that's used for the internal structure here. If we think about it, if we're doing something like a airplane fuselage, then we could use the same workflow to allow us to do this. As you can see, it's a very powerful workbench with just a few tools. So I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope to see you again in the new one.
If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos. And I hope to see you again in the next one.